Here we are in Cape Door, and we're down here shaft hunting. Uh, this area has these gigantic sheer cliffs, highlands along the, uh, along the water. And we're way up here, probably, uh, oh, a good 300 feet off the, uh, the beach. Uh, the shafts that are here were old copper mines, and we're down here exploring because they're allegedly the biggest, deepest, scariest, most dangerous shafts in the province. Um, and uh, what we're about to show you is, uh, at least this first one, is <laughs> certainly living up to that reputation. They drove them here up on the top of the cliff, and then they, uh, they went straight down to all the different levels of workings uh, to get that copper that's uh, here in these cliffs. Okay, there's the cliffside where I was standing, taking the, uh, the shots over the edge. And if we turn around and head up this trail, and this is a, this is a known location by Department of Natural Resources. They do have some uh, basic protections around it. And here's the, the snow fencing they've got around it. And they have to because the, uh, the drop into this hole is, uh, is measured as uh, 350 feet to the bottom. I've opened the iris up here on the camera so we can uh, get the most light looking down this black, black hole. But there's uh, a tree collapsed across it, probably intentionally. The snow fence is all broken down by it. But looking down this thing, it's hard to photograph from this angle. This is just one angle, but I'll show you. But that just goes down forever. Here we are over on the other side, and again there's the, uh, the snow fence all crumpled down by the, uh, the fallen trees. But we're going to get another angle looking down this thing because it's a little better from over here. I just got to get down on my hands and knees and for God's sake not fall into this thing. Yeah. Again, it's, it's hard to show on video how uh, nutty this actually is. Try and convey to you that it's a, a pit of death. <laughs> We thought there was a pit of death in episode six. Well, uh, this one sort of trumps that by like a thousand times. Okay, we're situated here on the other side and uh, we've got a, a rock that we're going to chuck down and, uh, and listen to it crashing its way down through there. Okay, are we ready? Ready. Here we go. All right, can we do another one? Okay, everyone silent. Wow. Third time a charm? All right. Oh, a whole bunch. Three at a time. Ready? Go. All right. Wow. So that one is 350 feet, according to Department of uh, Natural Resources, their measurement of this one. Just incredible standing, like it's, uh, it's almost something you have to behold in person to really get the, uh, the immensity of what we're looking at here. Looking around here, there is, uh, there is a concrete abutment here right next to it, all nice, nicely covered with nature and moss. We suspect that this was, uh, this was the base for the head frame that was at the top of this uh, shaft. On our way to the next site, we, uh, we ended up coming across this uh, sort of contraption of a smashed stump. And we uh, noticed that there was uh, a canister in it, 
So we believe we found uh, the Cape Door geocache that's here near the uh, near that 350 foot shaft. A camouflaged case. Let's have a look at what's in here. Whoa! It is the geocache. All right. All right. Let's see here. Geocache site, please read. Congratulations, you found it intentionally or not. There's a book, the the the, the log book, I think they call it. Log book. There we go. Okay. Let's see how many people. Oh. Okay. So May 21st, 2010. Oh, it's been here since 2010. All right. <laughs> it is quite a hike out here, so. Two gypsies. We've seen that before. We That's did. Damn. Uh, Londonderry. Were they, Cooksbrook. were they in the Cooksbrook they were. log book? Oh, okay. Hello, gypsies. We're gonna, we're gonna sign this puppy and put it all back, so, uh... Quebec. Oh. Found wow. by accident. <laughs> Just like us. <laughs> Basically. All right. The hike continues here at Cape Door. We are in a, uh, a brook valley. Uh, some folks were kind enough to uh, make some rope work come down the hillside here into the uh, the brook valley and it helps us follow this path down which will uh, take us down to the beach okay the sunlight's so bright down there i knocked the iris down so there is the uh the beach we're coming down this narrow brook ravine Okay, off the side of the rope again here, if, uh, if you look in here, there is a uh, sort of a mini shaft that's uh, dug out. It looked, we, when we came upon it, we thought it was going to be huge, but... Uh... Uh, here's what we're dealing with. It, uh, it's cut right here into the, uh, the cliff side and it just ends right there. It doesn't go down 300 feet, maybe only uh, 20 feet. But uh, just wanted to point out, some poor animal met its fate at the bottom, fell in here. We think it might be like a, a deer, something. And just one last shot to let you see uh, where we're gonna go over the edge there and down onto the beach using these ropes. Here we are down at beach level. We just come down the, uh, the brook valley there. And once you're down here, you're just sort of in this uh, oasis of round polished stones. These majestic cliffs, they go way up. <laughs> All right, we're hiking down here to a hole we're seeing in the distance at this point now. It's quite a large opening down here we can see in the distance, but um, we don't know if it's uh, an adit or if it's uh, just a, a sea cave of some kind here on the shoreline. All right, here's, uh, here's that opening in the distance there, right in the center of the screen, out there on the point that was beckoning us. That's what we're approaching. The boys are down there, they're almost there, but uh, again, we still don't know if that's uh, part of the copper mining operations that were here or if... Uh, or if it's just, just a sea cave. Mother of God, look at the size of this place. We are getting a shout of at it. <laughs> you see an at it? All right, the at it that we found is uh, on the cliff face there. Uh, it's quite far in the distance there. Um, you can see it. And we've discovered that that is exactly below where we shot the last segment up there at the top of the cliff next to the big birch tree. And there's actually an aluminum ladder up there. I wish I had a zoom lens, but it's up there um, hanging over the edge and, uh, and just exactly below it, just right down that 350 foot shaft, this hole goes into those workings. 
Let's go over and have a little closer look. All right, there's that hole that we haven't gone to yet down at the point. The massive cliffs, about 300 feet high over our heads here. And uh, there is that adit that is up from the ground level. That's probably 30, 40 feet up in the air. But like I said, that is directly below the birch tree you see in the center of the picture up there. Um, there it is, the big birch tree, which is where we shot the footage up at the top of the 350 foot shaft. But we ain't getting in there today. There's no way unless we had a cherry picker. <laughs> and down from the adit here on the beach level coming around the rocks here, I just noticed that uh, there's another piece of the, uh, the aluminum ladder. The other half is uh, up tied hanging off the clip up by the uh, the birch the big birch tree up at the top so someone was trying something with aluminum ladders uh, hopefully no one got hurt but uh, there's one half laying on the beach okay here we are navigating over this slippy seaweed and uh, he's reporting that it's nothing so we'll see all right, here's that hole that was in the distance. Looked like a big adit, but it is not. It is a, uh, looks to be a natural eroded sea cave here in the, uh, the side of the Cape Door cliff. It's big though, but it's not a mine. So sometimes you strike out, but you have to go look. After quite a long hike, we've come along to uh, this huge opening in the cliff and we think it's a lead. Okay, he says it looks like it's going straight in, so uh, let's get a little closer. All right, so we've confirmed it is an adit with drifts going to the left and the right in this huge cliff here on Cape Door. Just kept the rock and grab there and... and there's water babbling down from it, which is a good sign. We're up in the uh, in the adit now, off the uh, the beach. We climbed up here. Here's what we're looking at in here. There is this uh, tram cart. What would you call that? Tram cart wheels. Yeah. Well, we've got a drift heading that way, and uh, one heading in there. Let's go. There is some water in here. There's looking back to the uh, the mouth, and uh, on we head. Hey, we've got some timbers up here. Timber with an old nail. Look at that. And if you look here off the drift, the way the ceiling goes up over here, they stoped right up in there, like a a big strip, three four feet higher than the the ceiling of the drift itself. Wow. There's looking back at the mouth to the beach. We're in about 100, 125 feet now, and the boys have come across uh, kind of a large stoped out room. It was way up in there. And what is this? Shaft. Ooh, the shaft down. The shaft down. And there's crib work going down, 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 down. Oh my God, that's spooky.
some more. Yeah. This crazy shaft down. So here's more from the side with the uh, the log out of the way. Again, just this, uh, what looked like a puddle is a, a deep, dark, foreboding shaft that goes down out of sight. And this is filled with water. This is uh, above uh, the, the beach level for sure. Okay. okay, we had seen a hole there over from the, uh, from the, the shaft pool here, and he just went to check it out, and he considers it a full belly crawl, so we're not gonna go over there. All right, we're gonna do the old uh, rock toss and uh, see, there it goes. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, the, it kinda went slow motion in the water. Okay, the uh, looking back out to the uh, the mouth, the the drift does continue here past this uh, this giant shaft, whole pit, water filled thing. So let's go. Okay, up ahead we have a, a dead end. I see uh, dynamite holes. Look at them all. All right, going back here to the intersection, there is uh, an end in this direction as well. All right, not super extensive in the uh, in this particular cape door at it. Hopefully we'll spot some others, but uh, we're heading back to the mouth. All right, here out near the mouth with the, uh, the daylight coming in, one thing you start to notice is uh, nature is able to thrive on the walls, which you don't see once you get about 20, 30 feet into a mine. Okay, he's getting some snaps here at the mouth, but before we go on our journey out of here, just to uh, show you the drift that was off to the right, right here at the, at the mouth, it, uh, it doesn't really go anywhere. Um, it may have at one time, but it's certainly well caved and filled, or back filled, either intentionally, naturally caved, who knows. But it goes in there maybe 25 feet and just uh, comes to an end. So that's it for this uh, particular hole. We move onward. All right, now that we're back out of the attic and have uh, hiked a little bit, we've decided that uh, dusk has fallen here. And, uh, We've decided it's probably safest before we get caught down here in the dark to get back to our, uh, our point that goes back up the cliff and into the woods so we can bushwhack back to the vehicle. Uh, so what we're gonna do is uh, we made an executive decision to break this Cape Door trip off for now with a vow to come back for sort of a part two and uh, basically uh, Check the other points next time when we've got more daylight. It's just this place ended up being so massive and so huge compared to what we uh, what we thought it was going to be. <laughs> so uh, before we get stuck down here by the tide in the dark or something with no way up the cliff, we got to get back to our known point. So that's it for uh, for this one, and uh, we will come back here and uh, and check out the rest. <laughs>